I got us reservations for 7 o'clock at one of the trendiest restaurants in town. At 7.15, I was stuck in a traffic jam. I hope to God she saw my texts. Hey babe, I'm running late. Traffic is a nightmare. Must be an accident. Don't worry, I'll be there soon. Hey babe, in case you didn't get my last text, I'm still in traffic. Hey cutie pie, it's me again. Is your phone on? Maybe it is and you just can't hear it. Must be loud in there. Is your ringer on silent? I sent a few more just to make sure she knew I was going to be late. I don't get out much, so this was a pretty big deal for me. I needed to be absolutely sure she knew I wasn't blowing her off. You see, she's really pretty and funny, and wow, she's smart. What are the odds such an amazing woman would want to date a miserable piece of shit like me? At 7.30, the worthless piece of human garbage, also known as me, finally got to the restaurant. And there she was, just as beautiful as she was on webcam, maybe even more beautiful. I enthusiastically explained to the hostess that I met a beautiful woman on Skype and I had made reservations for 7 o'clock and I really wanted to get here on time but I was stuck in traffic and I texted her a lot to let her know everything was fine and I wasn't blowing her off. The hostess smiled and directed me towards her table. I sat down and gazed lovingly into her eyes. She didn't say anything. Well, it's not like she literally didn't say anything but I guess she literally didn't say anything for the first 10 seconds. Then, she literally did say something. I, I don't... I don't understand. I continued to gaze lovingly into her eyes. But... but you just... She was clearly nervous. Makes sense. I have quite an intimidating presence, but don't worry. I'm a really nice guy, but sometimes people tell me I make a bad first impression. Then I decided to say something because, you know, it might make things less awkward. I'm I'm sorry I'm late. I was stuck in traffic and I sent you seven text messages to let you know I wasn't blowing you off. I'm not that kind of guy. Is Is your ringer off? I bet the ringer is off and you just didn't hear it. After all, this is the trendiest restaurant in town. Lots of chatter and background noise. This would make it easy for you to ignore my texts. On second thought, I take it back. I don't think you were ignoring me. You just, for some reason or another, weren't able to hear my seven text messages. She literally didn't say a word for 11 seconds. Then, she started to talk. I is this a joke? I mean, you're not late. You got here before I did. You went to the men's room just a minute ago. Wait, what? We ordered cocktails, you ordered the French onion soup, but then you changed your mind and got the gazpacho. That sounds like something I would do because I highly enjoyed both of those soups. The waiter stopped by our table. Your soup will be here in just a minute, would you like another cocktail? M what? Was this prank so elaborate that even the waiter was in on it? Why the hell was she doing this? Why? For what? For what reason? T to convince me that I had arrived on time? Was this a passive aggressive way of berating me for my tardiness when I clearly let her know via multiple text messages that I was stuck in traffic? I don't fucking like it when people play games with me. Well. Well, whatever. If she was going to play this game with me, then I was going to play along too. Why not? There's no way this was really happening. Maybe it was just some creep who looked a lot like me, and you couldn't tell because, uh, I don't know, maybe the lighting? She gave me a seductive wink. At least I think she did. Oh golly geez, I guess I'll just never understand the ladies. Bryce, listen to me very carefully. If you're right, then I was here with some weirdo who just happened to look exactly like you and have the same exact voice and wear the same exact clothes and have the same exact job. He talked about his job. Not his job. Your job. Down to the very 
last detail. Now, things were starting to get interesting. You said he went to the men's room, right? Then he must still be there. Wait here. When I opened the door, I saw a balding, portly, middle-aged man with a large penis urinating in the urinal. He seemed awfully surprised when we made eye contact. Really? Back so soon? You're not feeling well or something? He was in on it too. The games, the games, the games. I knew I had to play along. No, no, I just... Uh, my friend wandered off. I thought he might be in here. Sounds like you care quite a bit about your friend. Yeah, yeah, we're best buds. He must have exited through the back door, but but how did he know when to leave? There was no way he could have seen me arrive. I, he was in the bathroom, for Christ's sake. I made my way back to our table, trying not to pay attention to the dinner's judgmental stares. Why were they looking at me? Were they playing games too? I knew we weren't safe. We had to leave. Based on her flirtatious attitude the last few months, I thought we might end up going over to her place for a, you know, coffee. But we were so shocked and frightened that romantic gestures were far from our minds. She didn't even give me a peck on the cheek. She called me 13 minutes later, as I was approaching the front door of my house. Bryce, Bryce, what the fuck is wrong with you? She couldn't be serious. I got us reservations at the trendiest restaurant in town, and all she wanted to do was toy with my mind, and she has the fucking nerve to call me and say that she is upset. Whatever. I might as well play along. Whoa, whoa. Uh, slow down. Why are you angry? You followed me home. You said you were angry that I didn't give you a goodnight kiss. I practically had to chase you away. I had no idea why you were such a fucking psycho in real life. I never should have met this psycho bitch in the first place, but she seemed so nice online. And she wouldn't stop trying to convince me that I followed her home when I clearly did not. Whatever. Might as well keep playing along. Wait, please, just listen. I didn't follow you home. I'm parked in my driveway. I, I see you. Get, get the fuck away from me. This isn't fucking funny. Bryce, this isn't fucking funny. Then she screamed. She screamed a lot. I heard about her on the news this morning. She was stabbed 26 times. Poor little thing bled out like a stuck pig. My phone started ringing off the hook. Apparently people thought I had something to do with it. No, I'm just kidding. My phone wasn't ringing off the hook. I got one call. It was from my twin brother. Hi Bryce. Hi Brian. Last night was fun, I said. You timed it perfectly, and how the hell did you get there by seven? Traffic was a nightmare. I heard there was an accident, so I took the subway. There's my brother for you, always thinking ahead. We should do this more often, I whispered. I like playing games with people. Kyle stared long at my mobile phone as if he feared it would attack him at any moment. I mean, everybody uses Skype. I know you won't believe me. Nobody believes me. This is just too weird. Kyle shook his head. I had this computer for nearly a year, and there was never anything wrong with it. For at least six months, I didn't even have a blue screen. It worked perfectly. And then, I installed Skype. I had it installed before, but it kept bothering me when it started with the computer, so I uninstalled it. But when Shelly went on holidays, she asked me to install it so we could talk for free while she was abroad. Kyle sighed. I didn't even bother with it until she was gone, but I knew Chelly would be upset if I didn't have it already when she arrived. She likes to be a drama queen. My princess is just like that. And the installation went all normal. 
there was this usual warning from Windows, and I clicked OK, and then there were two or three screens, and it was all done. That night, Chelly didn't even go online. Double standard, I call that. I always have to be online when she wants me to be, but whatever. The thing is, after I went to bed, I left my computer on. I never do that, you know, saving electricity and stuff, but I thought Chelly might still call. Kyle seemed to sink under the table. I don't know what time it was exactly. It must have been 2 a.m. or so, definitely long after midnight, when I woke up. And I was connected to somebody else on Skype. But it wasn't Chelly. Skype is not meant to connect you unless you click on the green button, is it? It was really strange. There were a few people on the other side, definitely a male and a female, and their faces were blurry, but they were staring into the camera. It was really creepy, but I quickly ended the connection and shut my computer down. His eyes were again focused on my phone. I is that thing on? P please turn it off. I took the phone, showed Kyle that it was turned off, and he relaxed. Sorry about that, it's just, you know, with smartphones and everything, you never know where it is, where they are. He breathed in deeply. I think I slept normally for the rest of the night. I thought it was just some weird glitch, but I wasn't sure whether it was just some sort of nightmare because in the morning, my computer was running again and Skype was on full screen mode, but I wasn't connected to anyone else and the log didn't show anything. I talked to Chelly during the day and she told me that all was fine and that actually she had been angry at me because she didn't see me online. It took me a while to convince her that I had installed Skype and that I was online, but in the end, we had a nice conversation and Chelly told me how much she enjoyed the beach and everything. The thing is, I turned my laptop off during the night, I'm sure of it, but I woke up again because of the laptop. The screen was really bright and the moment I woke up, I saw movement on it. It, it, it was strange, again. It looked like a party. Four or five really thin people in black clothes were moving behind the screen. From their shapes, I could see that two of them looked female, but their faces were really blurry. I quickly turned the laptop off, but then, it was around 5 in the morning. My phone woke me up. It was a call from Chelly, and she was really upset and angry at the other end. She was ranting something that I should tell her in advance when I have friends over and that I shouldn't wake her without good reason. We actually had a fight then, and it turned out that somehow, she got a Skype call on her laptop that looked as if it was from me. But it turned out that somebody else must have called accidentally. Kyle rubbed his eyes. I was really weirded out by that, but I still played it off that there had just been some strange malfunction. I actually thought that it was something with my account, that it had maybe been connected with someone else's or so. At least, that would explain why I kept getting calls myself. The day afterwards was horrible. I was tired all the time and I couldn't concentrate at all on my work, but then the night was even worse when I came home and Chelly wasn't online. And again. I woke up at night from strange lights and movement. It was the same slim figures in black, but they seemed to be closer to the screen. I barely saw their bodies. It was as if their hands and faces were pushing towards the camera, as if they were basically fighting for being in view. And still, they were really blurry. I slammed the laptop shut and I even unplugged it. But this image, those thin bodies pushing towards the camera, it kept me from sleeping. Kyle absentmindedly pulled his lips with his right hand. The conversation in the morning with Chelly was really strange. I went online and right away she was shouting at me without warning, accusing me of not being online and of leaving her alone. Then Chelly canceled the call 
and for the rest of the day she didn't go online. I talked to her in the evening, maybe around 6. She was online, and when I Skyped her she kept saying these weird things, that it was nice that I had come, but she was really angry and kept saying that I had left her alone. I really didn't understand why she was angry. And at some point, she either ended the call or the connection was interrupted. It was mid-sentence, and suddenly, Chelly was offline. But that night was the strangest. My laptop was on. But that night was the strangest. My laptop was on again. I was sure I turned it off. But around 3 a.m., the light woke me up. The screen was the first thing I saw. But there was just an empty room with white walls on it. It was really surreal. And then there was a soft knock on my door, and Chelly came in. I was really surprised. I mean, she had been booked for two weeks, but it was Valentine's Day. I thought maybe it was a surprise that she had planned it like that. And she was wearing this nice lingerie. I've never seen that on her. She didn't even say a word. She just kissed me and I smelled her sweet smell, and not even a minute later, she was riding me. It was really the best sex we had for a long time. It was so intense, so passionate. Kyle looked at me. Really, I'm sure it wasn't a dream. It felt far too real. But then in the morning, she was gone, and my laptop was still running. But it was sitting on the floor for some reason, and it was leaning against the table so that the screen was lying flat on the floor and the keyboard was up against the table. I figured it just fell down when Chelly sneaked out, but honestly, it, it was strange. I called Chelly and she was incredibly happy to see me. She told me what a great night she had and I told her the same, but it was strange that, that she was back in her hotel. I thanked her for her visit and Chelly pulled a really strange face and then we were disconnected. The only thing frozen on the screen was her face, with an open mouth, with this quizzing expression in her eyes. Kyle pushed my phone to the edge of the table. I pocketed it. I tried to talk to her again at night, and I saw that Chelly was online, but she just didn't answer. I tried it for at least 15 minutes, again and again but Skype just kept ringing without any reaction. So, after a while, I went to bed again. I figured she was just angry for whatever reason. Still, just in case, I left the laptop on so that she could call me back. Kyle was speaking faster. I really don't know how else to say it, but when I woke up, I saw these weird shadows in my room, and I knew that something was wrong. I looked up and I saw the movements on the laptop. There were three figures again. I'm sure I hadn't called anybody, but still they were staring at me. But suddenly, this one guy on the screen moved backwards, the others moved away, and this guy ran towards the camera. And then I saw his hand coming out, and just a fraction of a second later, his arm and the rest of his body. He was right in my room, jumping out of my damn screen. I screamed and he quickly backed in the shadow. And then I saw how there were two other figures standing there. Another guy, and both the guy's faces were covered in shadows. But there was also a girl, and she looked exactly like Chelly. I screamed at Chelly to move away from the figures, but instead, her face stretched really widely and she ran towards the screen and somehow she stepped inside my laptop. I know, I know it sounds insane, but she stepped right inside my laptop and then the other two ran right after her. I was just frozen in bed. These guys were at least as tall as me, but they just stepped inside the laptop and it was as if they disappeared inside it. For a moment, I saw the room again on the screen. Four of these figures arguing, and then a fifth one. A larger guy fell into view, and right afterwards, my screen went black. Kyle grabbed the table. It took me nearly 10 minutes to unlock my phone. It kept telling me that I entered the wrong unlock pattern, but when I finally had it on, just in the same moment, I got a call from Chelly. She screamed at me how I had left, and why I had left, and how I would dare to just leave her like that. 
with Skype running and people watching us. She was really outraged and she kept screaming and didn't let me explain. She even accused me of charging money to others for watching us have sex. I heard some crashing sound and then the connection was lost. Kyle's voice cracked. I called the hotel and asked them to put me through, but they said nobody answered in the room. I begged them to check over and over again, but they cited all sorts of stuff about hotel policy until I said that I would call the police. Then, they finally said they would go to check. It took about 10 minutes for the receptionist to come back. He said that the woman in the room was very upset and that she had refused to talk to me and that I should stop calling the hotel but at least I knew she was alright. I kept Skype online all day, and I kept trying to call Chelly, and even her family, but none of them answered the phone. I actually didn't talk to her since then at all. She just refused to have anything to do with me or to let me explain anything, but at least my laptop stopped acting weird. Kyle cried. I don't know if I'm going insane, I mean, it's been two months, and maybe I just have some sort of memory disorder. Maybe I just don't remember what happened. Or maybe it's her. But last week, Chelly called me. She said that she still hadn't forgiven me for the cam horse stuff, but that she still wanted to talk to me. She refused to tell me anything else on the phone. I met her not even an hour later, and when I saw her sitting at the table, crying, I just went to hug her. She hugged me back, and then she repeated it. I still can't forgive you for that, and she added, but I'm pregnant now. <laughs>